a virtual. The prize pool they're competing for is $30,000 in total, first place, taking home $6,000, $5,000, dollars for second place and four thousand dollars for third so this is one of the biggest tournaments of the year for the players they know it and they yeah. are here to compete and give their very best to try to win those prizes yes and with that being said i think we're ready to look at the matches coming up here if we take a look at the upcoming matches we have match a which is the first one we're going to be seeing here and i think we can start introducing the players yes the first player on the list perhaps needs no introduction to those new to track mania carl jr from canada is considered the greatest player of all time in the game five world championship titles five serrator cup championships that he's won as well is coming through all the way from canada 26 years of age plays for the controller Give a warm welcome to the stage for one of the greatest Trackmania players we've ever seen, Carl Jr. Now, Carl, we are here in northern Norway. How is it coming up all the way here, and how excited are you for today's matches? It's been good. I met some of the nicest people I've ever seen. The landscapes are so beautiful. You should be proud of your country. And Eric should be proud of what he has achieved with this event. It's perfect. Woo! You're the man, Carl Jr. Good luck today, please. Have your seat. And we can say hello to the next player today, which is Brand, a 23-year-old player from uh, France playing for Carmine Corp. He's a seven times Raider Cup finalist and got fourth place in the last Trekmania Grand League. Can we have a warm welcome for Bren? <laughs> Hello, Bren. You have a history of friendship with Carl Jr. here. You even were teammates in the last Serrator Cup where you got finalists together. How do you feel about facing off against your teammate? I think it will be fun. Like, I'm very happy to play against him again. Like, we've <laughs> faced so many times in the past and it's the same now. So yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy to face him again and hope we'll deliver a good match for everyone. Take your seat, amazing. The next player we will introduce to the stage is McQuattro, coming in from Finland, the Nordic representative, also 26 years of age, is a new player in the Trackmania Grand League, just qualified there this season, the Finnish champion as well this year. Give it up for McQuattro. Now, Mikuatro, this is some tough opposition you have here. You come from Finland. It's been a tough journey in the qualifiers. Do you think you can get to the top eight and to tomorrow's playoffs here? Uh, I know that it's going to be tough, but I will try to make the Nordic countries proud and represent them as best I can. Let's Thank hope you. for the best here. Total Italian for Mikuatro. And we have one last player to present Energize, another 23-year-old player from France playing for B Genius. He is a newer player in the uh, big stage, but he is going to represent himself big time on the big stage. Can we have a warm welcome for Energize? So today's first match here has some of the biggest names ever in Trekmania. How are the nerves going into this first match? Uh, to be honest, I'm not nervous. I'm just trying to enjoy myself in front of this big crowd right here because uh, um, since the beginning of, my, of the trip in Norway, you have been such an amazing people in Norway. So I'm glad to play uh, in front of this crowd. So I just get my 100% and let's see how it goes. Let's, let's go! It. Let's hear it! And with all four players settled in on the computers on the stage, we are moments away from kicking off the opening match of the tournament. It is going to be very exciting here, and hopefully you guys will enjoy it to the best of your abilities. We're going to give you the best show that we can. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin the Arctic Gaming Experience 2022. Woo! Yeah, let's sit down. So, we're on the server here, looking at the drivers. They are still warming up a little bit, just getting ready to start up the matches right here. They are, but 
I mean, the practice they've already put in is incredible. We saw it in the seating. They were only one minute apart, uh, one second apart after three minutes of driving. And they have refined every single turn on every single track. It's really just a matter of can you deliver what you have already tried to get into your muscle memory uh, across the last weeks of uh, grinding. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Because these players all have practiced both offline and online on these maps. So it's going to be interesting to see if they have something up their sleeve they haven't yet presented to us. It's always interesting in the opening match of a tournament whether players have, you know, a hidden a line on the track, a racing line that no one else has seen, whether they have a strategy to keep more speed and, and whatnot. We are getting right into it here. And to tell you a little bit about the tracks we will be playing, there are five tracks in the competition. Uh, they will be chosen at random, so the players need to be ready for anything that is going to get thrown at them. The format we are playing, we are competing to reach 120 points first. Now you get 10 points every round you win, you get 6 points per second, 4 points per third, and 3 points per fourth. You want to reach 120 points total, and then once you get there, you have to win one final round to secure your spot and get the overall points for the match. And if history has anything to show for it, even if you are the first person to reach that finalist position, the 120 points, it is not easy to close out the game because you do need that last round where you win against your opponents. And at that point, your opponents are doing everything they can to deny you that victory. Yeah, and just to uh, explain, we are in the warm up here. The players are gonna get to drive one or two races on the track before it kicks off for real. But you can already see it here. Just how refined it is, look at how similar of the lines that the players choose to drive here with the car is. That is because those lines will give them the most exit speed and the best setups to continue the race all the way to the finish line. So Trackmania is, for those of you who are newer to the game, a very fast-paced racing game where there are many mechanics to learn. It is easy to get into, it is very, very hard to master, and each of these players have dedicated hundreds of hours to these maps and thousands of hours into the game. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing that this game has so much history. Players like Carl Jr., I mean, Carl Jr. first became world champion in 2013. That, that's nine years ago. And since then, he has won five more world championship titles. The others have also been playing for 10 years or more. But right now, we are starting off in the very first round. Let's hear it for the four players here as they kick off this match and the tournament. Yes, we can see already from the very start, all the players are going to be very close to each other as they have very similar starting lines. But we can see some mistakes happen once in a while here. They jump into a right-handed drift. They want to drift as little as possible to get that exit speed out of the turns. And all the players seem to be doing well. There is a little bit Ooh. of dirt on the right side there. If the players hit that, they are going to reduce their speed. Ooh, McQuattro dropping down a little bit. think he did indeed hit the exit of that dirt turn with his back wheel. And we see Carl Jr. jump up into the lead, but Bren and Energize, the two French players, are in contention for this round. About 20 seconds of driving left to be done. If you're going to catch up to Carl, you need to do it in one of these turns right now. Bren pushing in the downhill to try to get more exit speed than Carl for that finish jump. Energize even clipping and having to go for the safe finish. It is Carl winning by 100 ahead of Bren. Yes, and this is what we're talking about. We are looking at players that are so close in their times. 0.215 and 0.221, we're talking six thousandths of a second separating the top two players of that round. That's less time than it takes you to blink, like even half yeah. of that, if anything. So very close here to start. Small mistakes from Equatro and Energize, but you can see they still got four and three points respectively. And another chance now to come back in round number two. And as we see here, the players, they are both looking for that fast pace, but consistency is also key. If you can drive fast, that's great. But if you can only drive fast every third round, you're still going to lag behind. You need to be fast every single time you drive. And we can see Carl Jr. remaining on first place here for the second round. Yeah, look at this field. It's stacked. Everyone just going, hammering into the turns right now, trying to just... Get a small advantage, Carl still holding that lead. Having to release, though, opportunity for Energize now to capitalize on that. Get more exit speed up the hill, it's gonna go wider. But this will carry all the way to the next drift setup. And we have four players within five hundredths of a second here in round number two, coming down to the last corner now. Energize on the inside line, Carl with more speed. Who's gonna get the best last jump? Oh, oh Carl, Carl takes round two. Once again, only one hundredth of a second separating the players, and this is just incredible track mania getting played right here. 
Yeah, but it is Carl again just inching out a small win, and this is something he's done time and over time is barely finding these wins, whether it's World Cup, whether it's the Raider Cup, or Trackmania Grand League has four title wins there as well. He does find these small advantages often, and it's how he can run away with matches. As we see Miquatro actually getting an incredible start coming in here, and Carl Jr. and Miquatro are separating themselves from the rest of the field, trying to push out in front, and they're doing it beautifully right here. Carl Jr. with a little bit of a wider setup, trying to get more exit speed energized, unfortunately hitting that outside wall and drift, and Carl Jr. is now going to take over the lead. Miquatro right behind, has to push in really soon. Yeah, Miquatro has to try to find it here. It's halfway through the map. They did see that Carl hesitated in this turn last time. This is where Carl had to let off the acceleration momentarily. And the others are finding some gains again. Bren catching up a little bit, but it's still that one tenth of a second. They need to risk it all in the end for the 10 pointer, or they'll have to settle for a six. McQuattro on the inside, but look at this. Carl should be able to hold on to that lead, and Bren will be able to secure second place. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is three victories in a row for Carl Jr., def the defending world champion, showing up today. Yeah, already one fourth of the way to about 120 mark, and uh, could secure four points pretty fast here if this continues. And often we talk about this, and it happened in the World Cup too, is that when Carl starts chaining together win after win, he gets into the zone and you really try, have to try to break that streak or else the match will just be over before you know it. You have to try to find a win here to slow down the pace of Carl Jr. So curious to see if anyone can make that happen. The times they're driving are very quick. One minute 08 is only about two or three times away from the world record. So uh, the level is extreme right now. The level is incredibly fast here. As you can see, all three of the top players, four of the top players, they're driving on top of each other as we see a mistake there coming in from Bren. And another mistake coming in from Energize. And now it's Miquatro and Carl Jr. fighting for that first and second place. Carl Jr. is about two car lengths ahead, setting up here for the last left-hander before the finish. And it just looked like Carl Jr. has this in the bag. One more turn and a couple of jumps. And Carl Jr. can say he's won four rounds in a row. Four out of four for Carl Jr. And he basically matches the time he drove in the last round as well. Important six points for Miquatro, though, who was in last there. And with that six pointer, we'll be able to now jump one point ahead of Energize to stay level with the others in the match. And we've talked about this several times, also in a lot of the other tournaments, that not only is, you know, driving fast a, a very important part here, but your mental, the, the, the absolute momentum you get from winning game after game, it gets into your head and you start feeling yourself in the zone. And the opposite can happen for the players that don't get a lot of points in the start. You can get into a rut where it's just uh, loss after loss. It starts to wear on you and you might do more mistakes than you otherwise wouldn't. So important there for Miquatra to keep up with the others. Now into the final round on the first map here. See if Carl can get that streak, five for five wins, or if anyone is gonna be able to beat him here. McQuattro, the closest opponent, clipping the edge, and Energize and Brand now find themselves at over a tenth behind with only two corners left to go before the finish. Can they stop him here, or is it going to be a Carl show in match number one? There's a reason we consider him the greatest of all time. Energize clipping the corner. Bren will try his best, but Carl Jr. starts off the match with five for five. And an a, amazing time. A full sweep coming in for Carl Jr. here in the first match, and it is now up to the players to see if they can deny him that sweep here in the second one. They will try, but the crowd is also sounding like they are on Carl's side here. We hear some chants coming through for Carl. Now 50 out of 50 points, getting close to that 120 mark already. And we enter map number two. This is an interesting one, Janik. Yes. Here you can see this map is called Arctic, and it has a very northern theme with also not just um, the atmosphere of the map, but also the scenery. The scenery, you can see some lakes around the map. We have some snow. We even have an ice section where the players drive on the ice surface. And that is interesting. If you haven't seen that before, the players will turn the car sideways and drift through the entire turn. Yes, this is a mechanic that when the game came out, everybody had a hard time getting used to it because it is a brand new surface in the Trackmania game, this new Trackmania 2020 that came out a couple of years ago. But now the players have refined the surface so much, and now it looks very, very smooth once the players are driving it. So we have a quarter pipe jump here up to the top floor, and then this long ice slide where you can see the sideways turn that we're talking about. 
This is the most efficient way to drive on ice, but you also got to do it uh, very precisely to get it just right with the exit speed. And yes. in the warm-up here, Carl is again looking solid. Is he going to continue the streak, do you think? I think he has a solid chance, also just because of the momentum that he's built up uh, during the last match here. You will also see the players, you might think, why are they driving so wide lines? Why are they going so close to the outside corners of the map? And that's because the players have such a good understanding of the game and of these maps that they know this turn I have to go really wide to get the most exit speed because that's going to be what I need for the next 10 seconds of driving. Or they know I have to go tight, I need to go close to this corner because I really need this next turn set. Up. The players have such an incredible understanding of the game. They do, and that is why sometimes when we go into tournaments, we think there can't be anything that's undiscovered on these maps. But the players do tend to hold a couple of tricks before the tournament, and the first matches are often when and if we see any. So maybe if you have a secret line, now's the time to use it. We will pay close attention here in round number one. Uh, so far, nothing has been thrown out as a curveball. Pretty standard. We're going to go wide into this dirt corner to build up speed for the quarter pipe jump up. And then we get to the very important ice part here, which could decide the round. So the players do have a, a possibility of sliding out or hitting the inside penalty snow, which is also going to slow down your car. Quattro, unfortunately, getting a little bit of airtime and hitting that outside wall. Brennan Call Jr. now fighting for first and second place. Brennan actually in front, and he is now looking to deny Call Jr. that six time in a row victory here, but Carl Jr. did get the overtake, and now he's in front. Bren going for more inside line. Is Carl Jr. going to overtake Bren? Unfortunately, clipping the corner, and Carl Jr. taking home another victory. Carl Jr. keeping the streak going, energized, also sniping away the second place from Bren there, and getting six points for himself. Important there, as we see, Miquatro does clock in in fourth as well and secures the points. Yes, and we can see here that Carl Jr. has really you know, gotten away from his opponents in terms of the points. You can see it on the left side of your screen. Carl Jr. currently on 60 points, Bren 31, Energize 25, and Miquatro on 22. Yeah, Carl Jr. now double the points of the others already. And curious if you can keep that streak going. Right now in last place, bit of a uh, shaky start there. And Miquatro is pushing ahead now, but we saw him make a mistake right around these parts last time after the quarter pipe jump. You got to set this up. And the lower you dare to go here, the better, of course. Bren getting early grip there on the landing, and now the important ice slide. You do not want to touch the snow. That slows you down, and you want to be able to keep the car going through this downhill. McQuattro, and this time, he gets it right. He holds first place. Carl now actually in last in this round, something we don't see too often, but that just means the level is incredibly high if four players are able to keep up with Carl Jr. into the last corner now. McQuattro, just a car on the of brand, both pushing the corner. McQuattro going wide. Will he have the speed? McQuattro! Oh, he hits the finish! McQuattro, unfortunately, hitting the finish and not getting into it. Getting Bren, last place. And Bren crashed as well. It's actually Carl winning that round. Carl keeps the streak. He keeps seven the streak. for seven. That is an amazing turn of events, and Carl Jr. has now officially doubled the points of second place. Yep, 70 to 35, and I think if you're one of the other players now, you're starting to think maybe that first place isn't so possible anymore, but second place in the match is still within reach, and that gives you three very valuable points to take with you uh, throughout the day. So. A but, lot to be played for for the others. But as, I mean, we don't know if this is called Junior's, uh, the two maps here were called Junior's best maps. That and the other players could come back here in the next couple of maps as we see a mistake coming in from Bren. Called Junior currently on third. Miquatro once again trying to get over in the lead and energized, trying to push with a more outside line, trying to get more exit speed. And they're now going to be really close to each other, getting the outside line on the dirt uphill, really trying to push it as far as possible. And here we have the two top contenders, Miquatro and Energize, going into the last right-hander before the finish. Miquatro trying to maintain the lead. Energize really pushing it hard to see if he can get more extra speed, but it's not going to happen. And Miquatro is going to be the first player that takes away a win from Carl Jr. This time, Miquatro gets a chance at redemption, and he gets the 10 points there. And that is very valuable. That keeps him in the game with the others now. 38, 37, and 35 points for them. And Carl now, 74. That was a good seven win streak, similar to in the World Cup Finals, where he also won either six or seven rounds. But we saw in that match that Mime was able to claw his way back and even overtake Carl in points momentarily. It could happen here too. 
uh, that someone can get such a comeback going. So nothing is for certain yet. Absolutely. As we see here in the dirt turns, you can see the players, they're going really, really wide on these bank dirt turns. And it's because it's setting you up for the most amount of speed for this jump. And as Virtual said the last round, you want to go as low as possible in the jump. The faster you hit the floor, the faster your car can start driving in the right direction. So the players are really going to risk it. Great ice slide there for Energize to keep up with Carl. We see some crashes coming through in the back. I believe Bram has hit the wall. McQuattro, though, just tailing the field by a little bit, but Carl is now running with a small lead. Are they going to be able to catch up before the finish here? You need to go full speed into this last corner. Energize will make a mistake. McQuattro is going to secure a second place. Carl, another win. Carl taking home eight out of nine victories. That is an amazing performance coming in here from the defending world champion. But nothing is over quite yet. As we have seen, sometimes the finalist position can be the most difficult one to win. And there the other players have more than enough chances to deny Carl Jr. They will. So the way the format works, when and if Carl Jr. hits 120 points, he still needs to win one last round. And if he keeps crashing or getting beaten on time, then... Uh, he's not out of the match yet. It doesn't matter how big of a lead he had if he cannot close it out then. But the way he's playing right now, he is looking poised to try to win the first match. McQuattro out of this round and Brennan Energize now are going to try to challenge him on the ice. This is perhaps one of the parts where they can gain the most because when we get to the drifting parts again, Carl Jr. is uh, a clear favorite. Energize getting a lot of speed out of that ice line and is trying to close the gap into Carl Jr. here, but point three is separating the top two players, which is not a small amount. So Energize has to hope for a small mistake coming in from Carl Jr. here in the last right-hander. Otherwise, he will take home nine out of 10 victories, and he does so. It's another win for Carl, who's rapidly approaching 100 points, and what a great time that is as well, a 101.37. The world record on this map, a 101.21. So that is just 16 hundredths of a second off of the best time uh, in the world here on the yes. stage. That's crazy. That is an amazing performance. Doing that in the live rounds can be incredibly difficult. And now we're going to jump in to one of my favorite maps. Tell us about it, Janik. What do you like so, so much about Buda? So Buda is a map where the players are going to be able to change positions all the time. There are so many places in the map where a slight adjustment can really give you a good edge over your opponents. As we see the players, they're going to be driving here in the warm-up, a sharp left-hander going into the corner of a checkpoint and then into a engine off section where the players are not going to be able to accelerate the car, which means that the more speed they enter it with, the more they're going to have an edge on their opponents. Yeah, exiting that uh and an off part with a lot of speed is going to be crucial. You also see the quarter pipe jumps coming through here, a common theme. Also in the ending of the map, there's a very important quarter pipe jump. Here though, in the dirt, you want to jump wide, land wide for the checkpoint so that you can set up for this downhill turn. And then you'll see as we approach the ending, there's a small skip across the grass that the players have found where you jump into the platform downhill. And now the ending quarter pipe jump, the finish is right around the corner. You just got to go low into the finish here. Yeah. And that is going to the side of the round. It's going to yeah. be very so exciting all the way. If you are point one, point two ahead and uh, you're one of the players, you have to think, do I go really low and risk it to remain on first place? Or do I jump high, get a slow finish, but make sure that I get the points? Yeah, because there are players that are coming into the attack when they're in last. They have nothing to lose. They're going to go for the lowest jump imaginable. Yes, and that low jump is going to save you 0 0.2, 0 0.3 over your opponents if they get a high one. So it's going to be very interesting to see. Also, the quarter pipe jump early in the map is also very, very decisive. That was, as we see, called Junior here taking first already. But he has low speed on that end and off part. And this is what you mentioned, where if you enter with more speed, you will be able to climb back a little bit here. So the lead that he had is not as big as it seemed. We see McQuad with a small mistake, 0.3 behind the leading field. And Brandon and Energize are making up some lost ground halfway through the race now and into the dirt. It is still Carl looking to climb over 100 points here with either a first or second place. Let's see what the others can do. Landing in a right-handed drift right here and driving over the corner of the grass. It looks like Bren really is trying to push that exit speed. He's right behind Carl. Who is going to get the lowest jump here in the ending? Neck and neck. Carl Jr. going for a little bit of a low jump, but Bren is going to take it away from him. 
Bren just inching out with two hundredths of a second. And that 10 pointer is gonna put him far now in front of third and fourth. And there's McQuattro, you can see six point lead there as Carl has hit the 100 mark. 20 points left to go until he gets to finalist status. Yeah, he could very realistically hit that finalist status on this map, which would mean that he could close it out very, very soon. And it's up to the other players to see if they can deny him. But the consistency of Carl Jr. is not easy to play against. It's really not. Carl would rarely Ooh. make a mistake. But as we say that, a bit too close on the inside corner. Now a very important round for the others to try to fight for that 10-pointer. How low do you dare to go on the quarter pipe, Bren? Just leaving a few pixels there between his wheel and the wall. Will claim the lead with that now, a tenth ahead of McQuattro and Energized. But that can just as well come back to bite him in the end if someone decides to go even lower. Yeah, and you can also make a mistake in the ending if you go too low and hit the finish line, which we definitely might see happen here. Energized with a small mistake, and it's now going to be up to Bren and McQuattro to see if they can finish out strong right here. McQuattro is going to try to go low, I think, but Bren also really gets a Ooh. low line right there. Risking it a little bit, even though he was far ahead, and it pays off for him. Yeah, Bren actually crashed the inside corner of the finish, didn't get cleanly into it, and nearly lost the win with that. But it's two 10-pointers in a row now. Great map for Bren, who is slightly climbing ahead in that second place there. True, and Energized and Miquatro are very, very close here for the third and the fourth position. And even though you don't get first, that, th that doesn't mean that you have to stop trying because every single position in this match matters. Yeah, the players are going to play four matches today, and the total points they score in those four matches will decide if they make it to playoffs tomorrow or not. So a second place in this match will be way more worth than a third and a fourth and so on. So you really got to give it all until the last round. Carl now, after that mistake, is right back up into first. So we were saying you rarely see him make a mistake, and you often see him drive very fast whenever he doesn't. Up in first before the ending, but Bren has had two wins already. This time he will not win as he clips there. The dirt uh, grass shortcut, Carl looking for another win. Energized, close, but it's Carl who takes the round. And Carl is now only seven points away from getting finalists. So if he wins next round, he has already gotten finalists as the other players have not hit that 100 mark yet, which would put him in a great position to take home the four points from the first match here. Yeah, he's really laid the groundwork on the earlier maps, the seven wins in a row. Quite extreme to try to come back from for the others. They're gonna give it a try, but we also see some very fast times consistently here. 56.6, 56.7 is uh, just a few tons away from the world record, which is really good on a map as risky as this one. If you just look at how close to the walls and the corners they're driving in every turn, it's very refined and they're playing right at the limit. Oh, <laughs> Mequatro making it across with a huge lead now actually. Temp ahead of Carl yeah. and Energized. If you guys were wondering why it is that we say they have to go so low, it's because the second the wheels hit the ground, that's when they can start accelerating again. So the sooner you get your wheels to touch the ground, the more speed you're going to have uh, compared to your opponent. So it's crucial as we get into the final jump here, Miquatro and Carl Jr. Carl Jr. really sniping it in the ending. Miquatro unfortunately hitting that finish line and Carl Jr. will put himself into finalist position. Oh, that looks effortless for Carl. Carl will now receive the red badge as we call it, the finalist badge. This means one round win is all it takes for him to claim first place in the match. And now, if the others can deny him here, then he is not done. But the second he wins around, it's, it's over. The dangerous part here for the other players is that to call Junior, it doesn't matter if he gets fourth or second now. The only thing that matters is he gets first. So he's gonna push out every single corner. He's gonna risk every single line to make sure that he gets the best time possible because he only needs one more first place to close out the four-pointer. Oh, but it looks like he missed uh, his approach a little bit there, and that gives Bran an edge. Bran, who has already won two rounds in this map, one of the toughest opponents to deal with here for him, and it could be that Carl doesn't get out of it on this map. And if the deck of cards of the maps is shuffled just right, we could have the most difficult map coming up next, which could pose some problems for Carl to close out the match right now. Bran trying to deny him in the last round of Buddha here. Just needs to get that jump. Carl is going to risk it all, try to go low, but Bren holds on and keeps the others in the match. Bren denies Carl for just one more round, 
And I think now is when we go into the next map. So let's take a look at what we're gonna see. See Brenner 82, see Energize 68, and the Quattro 66. So the scores are still very close for those other positions as well. Absolutely, but we'll they do have to deny Call Jr. Ooh. for about six maps. We six have been served games. a treat here. This is considered one of the hardest maps in the map pack. It has a very difficult finish jump that you will soon see. And overall, the precision required to play this map without making mistakes is just extreme. It is crazy. So, of course, Virtual and I have played these maps before, and we can say with certainty that what you see on screen right now as the players are driving is incredibly difficult. It is so refined, it is so precise, and it's nothing that we can even hope to replicate. Yeah, you would need to sit down and practice these maps for hundreds of hours until it's mostly muscle memory, and also you need to know what the fall pits are, where you could potentially crash, what edges are da dangerous to clip and whatnot. Here you can see just a small jump through this gap. You want to go on the inside line. Watch out for all the edges here that you can clip, right? And you see Bran, and I think so far, already half the field has made a mistake in the warm-up. And that's the thing. There are so many small places where if you don't have quite the right amount of speed or you didn't have quite the right turn, you have to recognize it and immediately try to change your gameplay to make sure that you don't make a huge mistake on an upcoming section. And then let's pay attention to the end here. You jump to this platform, go left, and then you have to jump up on this platform, carry enough speed to do that, and into the finish ring. Very difficult to do consistently, round after round, and the smallest of margins here could cause you to crash. So. If there's one map they stand a good chance of potentially beating Carl Jr. on and maybe going for first place, it could be this one. That is very true, but as we can also see, it's a very technical map. And if there's one thing that the old school players are known for, it is the technical capabilities. So it is still very, very interesting to see if they have what it takes to deny Carl Jr. for the next possibly four to five rounds. We will see in one minute. We will be at the finish potentially with our winner, Carl Jr. In finalist, just needs that last victory. The others trying to keep him at bay right now. McQuattro did win that warm-up as the others crashed, but so far no one has made any mistakes as we go through that gap onto the dirt jump and we continue on into the second half of the map. No mistakes from Brent here on this corner clip and then the jump shortcut that they're all doing before we set up for the last couple of turns here, very close, but Bran keeping that win streak from the other map going and potentially claiming another 10 points here would be massive for him, not only for first, but even second place here. Going into the final right-hander before we jump in to the finish, and we have Bren in the lead. Is he going to be able to make the jump? He is going to be able to deny Carl Jr. for another round, and Bren takes home another 10-pointer, jumping up to 92 points. Amazing from Brand there, and we said, like, you can try to deny Carl here, but you need to drive a really fast run. They are, again, just a few tens from the world record, which I believe is up by Tween on this map, but, uh, yeah, 56.70 the world record, and we did 56.83 here, so the level you have to drive is uh, impeccable. Let's see how long they can keep it up, because Carl, what he's going to do is he's going to keep driving these runs, round after round, yes. and at some point he's saying the armor will break McQuattro, falling off the platform there, and now Carl is in the lead. So we take a look at Carl and his lines right now. This speed check, you can really easily make a mistake and hit the corner of that jump. And Carl Jr. actually lost a little bit of speed compared to Bren, and Bren now jumps down, gets more exit speed, and is really closing in, putting a lot of pressure on Carl Jr., and is now in the lead as we go into the second half of the match. Bren even further increasing his lead, and Carl Jr. now really has to push the final right-hander and into the jump if he wants to take home the victory. Oh, he's going for it, but Brad is still holding on. He could still clip anything. Any small mistake from Brad means Carl wins, but Brad holds on and takes another 10-pointer here. And Brad is now only two first places away from getting his own finalist position and could realistically actually take away the four points from Carl Jr. And we're staying on this map for another three rounds. That's exactly the rounds that Brent needs if he wins three in a row here to take away that first place. Really looks like we've landed in Brent territory here on this very difficult map. And Carl probably starting to feel the pressure a bit as he has held that finalist now for a while and has yet to close it out. And the others are starting to close in.
Do you think that the players have thought about this map being a Brand made a mistake. Brand made a mistake. And now it's up to Miquatra and Energize to be able to deny Call Junior, or he will take home that four points right now. Miquatro currently is the closest player, but Energize getting a good uphill there on the dirt, closing in just a little bit, but Miquatro is really pushing in hard, getting an outside line right there. They're gonna be neck and neck going into the second section of the map. 7,000 separate them here in a very decisive round with Miquatro. <laughs> goes into the wall and I think Carl Jr. now with an open road ahead, all he has to do is avoid crashing the walls and he might win match one here in the Arctic Gaming Experience. Carl Jr. takes on four points. Four points for the defending world champion, the maximum amount of points that you can have here in the first match and it goes to Carl Jr. To the light of the crowd, well played though from the others to keep up that close. Now we are playing for second and third in this match to the side. Who gets three and two points respectively? And Bren, with that performance, has pulled himself 24 points ahead of Energize to maybe get that second place now. And the difference between one point could mean the difference between winning $1,000 or $5,000. It is incredibly important that these players, they do not slow down just because the first place has been taken. These players have to continue staying focused, continue driving consistently. Bren really pushing it outside there, almost clipping the corner of that platform block, but Miquatro maintains the lead. It looks like Miquatro's really gotten into the rhythm of this map. In the early rounds, he made a couple of mistakes, but now he's really found the flow of it. He's able to match Bren, who won the first two rounds here. Coming up to the ending though, Bren found a great drift there, gained a bit of time, it's eight hundredths of a second, it's seven now, before the ending, Bren has more speed, is there gonna be enough distance? Two hundredths of a second in favor of Miquatro. Great push there in the ending by Bren, trying to overtake, and yeah, only three hundredths or tw uh, 28 thousandths of a second separating the players, but Bren is now only one first place away from getting his very own finalist here, and the players are gonna be probably uh, in need of denying quite a lot of times before they have their own finalist positions. I mean, realistically, if you win here for McQuad, if you win four rounds in a row, you get there, but yeah, you are gonna have to hold on for a while for that to be a reality. Bren only needs a win here or a second place, and he can pick it up on the next map too, but McQuadro is going to give his best in every round here, every punch, try to hold on. See Bren setting up wide there again, and that is very close to the limit of the platform, a bit further, and you would be off the track. You can see Miquatro and Bren are going for just a slightly different setup for those turns. And Miquatro seems to be coming out on top, but we still see them neck and neck here going into the final right hand of Bren, unfortunately, to make a mistake. And it looks like Miquatro is going to be all alone in the lead. Both Bren and Energize are a full checkpoint behind, and Miquatro just needs one more jump, and he gets it, taking home 10 points for himself. Energize making a mistake in the ending and actually Ooh. gets overtaken by Bren. Important that he actually reaches the finish there. If he didn't finish before the timer ticked down, he would have gotten zero points for the round. But here he stays in. So it is worth to note that Bren is now at 117 points. So he's, he is guaranteed getting finalist in the next round. But that does not mean that he doesn't care about the speed because he can still deny points from his opponents. Yeah, so anything for Bren here better than a last place will deny points from the others. And he will hit that finalist position. Then you can think about Miquatro. If he gets a win here, 107 he would find himself at when Bren reaches finalist. That's a win and a second place, or ideally two wins in a row. So yes. they are gonna they are gonna have to hold off Bren for at least two rounds, I believe, until they have a chance of winning themselves. So this map is Salmon, as can be seen by the statues uh, placed around the map of Salmon Fish. So this map has a lot of transitions here. And what does that mean, virtual? Transitions means that there's a jump or a you know change of surface. You go from road to dirt. You go from dirt to uh, platform. Basically, just making it a flowy map that changes between different styles. And uh, in order to get a lot of uh, time on this map, you have to master those transitions. You have to find out how do I transfer my car from this uphill to this platform as smooth as possible. How do I go from this road to this sausage road, as we call it, as smooth as possible? Yes. And often it's a combination of having the least possible air time and also carrying the most amount of extra speed that you can.
And that's the thing here. The players are going to be going from grass to road or from dirt to road a lot. And on grass or dirt in Trickmania, your car slides out a lot. It, you, you drift. But once you hit that asphalt surface, once you hit the road surface, your car snaps back into driving straight. And depending on how you do that snapback, you get more speed or less speed. And the players have to position their car perfectly in each one of these transitions to get that little bit of an edge over their opponents. Important round coming up now. McQuarter and Energize are going to try to secure some points here. Bren only needs to try to deny the others as he is secure to reach 120 no matter what. Might as well pick up a few points for the road to see who gets off to the best start. Very even after the first couple of drifts. Mm. Good exit speed from Equatro. That is going to propel him ahead of the others. And I think Bren now finds himself in last by two tenths down to the leader. Yeah, getting that airtime there from Bren on the platform section did reduce his speed quite a bit. And Equatro is now all alone in the lead. Energize getting a really wide line and he's going to have a little bit more exit speed trying to push in on the back here of Miquatro, but he's still gonna remain ahead. Another tech inside right-hander to maintain speed. Bren does so beautifully and overtakes for second place. And now we're heading into the final section of the map. Oh, Miquatro made a mistake on the inside drift. It's actually Bren in the lead now. Energize going too wide almost. Will have some exit speed, but it is going to be Bren taking that first place and denying the other some points. So Bren in the best spot as possible. So, Bren did come all the way from last place to first right there, just by being consistent throughout the rest of the map. So even a mistake in the start does not mean that you're out of the round. Yeah, he showed it there. You can still play from last place and try to gain time. It's not over even with a small error like that. And really, we say it's a mistake, but you know, you lose two tenths of a second across a minute of driving. It is uh, not a mistake uh, in most situations, but against players of this caliber, it's hard to fight back. Here, though, he's off to a better start, and now it's going to be very difficult for his opponents to keep up with his lines in the second half. Yeah, Bren really showing off how to do these very, very harsh drifts towards the corners of the map. Also going wide here on the dirt. Might be setting up for more speed than his opponents here, but everybody is neck and neck. We're talking two hundredths of a second separating the three players, and they get closer to the finish right here. Bren actually getting first place, and now he's going to take the sausage block jump. Can he get a little bit further than the others? He's going to be on third. Is he going to be able to overtake here in the ending? Bren inside line. trying to get the inside line, trying to get the exit speed, energy out with more extra speed, is he going to be able to make it energized, denying Bren in the final section of the map, three thousandths of a second. Three thousandths of a second keeps energized and McQuattro in the match, and I think McQuattro there, very happy to have a guardian angel to keep it alive. They're both at 105 points, and this is not over yet. It is not over yet, indeed, as we see McQuattro and Energize only needing 15 points to also get their own finalist position. And it is now starting to be crucial for Bren to close out this victory, or he might be getting a little bit nervous a little bit soon. And you know, they had the situation in the Serrator Cup as well, where it's really close in the last couple of rounds with finalist mode. And in that moment, Bren in the finalist position was not able to make it through here in Melee, the next tournament up on the schedule, he gets a chance to redeem himself and now close out that finalist position here for three valuable points in the tournament. Far out of the others, and Energized has made a mistake, so it is only McQuattro versus Bren in a one versus Ooh. one. But Bren hits the wall and the pressure is building now. You can feel it, the nerves are causing more mistakes than before. And if McQuattro here is able to see the splits, he will. Try to save this run now into the finish and give us a bit of time to breathe. And that is an important uh, aspect that we haven't really talked about. The players on their own screen can see just how far ahead they are of the others. So the players know, for example, McQuattro here, he knew that he was 0.7 seconds ahead of the field. So he did not need to take any major risks to put himself in a dangerous situation. He knew if I just drive smooth into the finish, I'm going to have this one for myself. And he does so. 115 now. Needs a win or a second place. It was a bit of time to breathe. And that is an important uh, aspect that we haven't really talked about. The players on their own screen can see just how far ahead they are of the others. So the players know, for example, McQuattro here, 
he knew that he was 0.7 seconds ahead of the field. So he did not need to take any major risks to put himself in a dangerous situation. He knew if I just drive smooth into the finish, I'm gonna have this one for myself. And he does so, 115 now, needs a win or a second place to get finalists himself. But really, since Brent is in the field, you know you have to try to win regardless. You have to try to deny him from closing out the match right here, right now, for two more rounds potentially. Good exit speed in that drift, not leaving a lot of room for caution. Energized on the inside line, dodging the pillar as well, and now getting a good setup into that grass turn to hold that lead temporarily. In the uphill drift, we see different lines coming through. Brent getting a better setup for the dirt potentially, but less speed on the others, and the lead will remain in favor of Energize, but only by a couple of hundreds. And on the inside line there, Brand overtakes now before the uphill turn. It's all three players level with a few drifts remaining on the track. McQuattro now in the lead. They've changed back and forth before the final corner. McQuattro pushing on the inside line. Brand setting up better for exit speed in the dirt line. Who is gonna have it here? Will Brand catch up or is McQuattro gonna hold on? Miquatro is finalist. And now we have a double finalist situation where if Bren or Miquatro wins this next match, they're going to take home the three points and the pressure is on. And can you imagine if Energize wins here? Then we will have three finalists in the field. Energize, the only path to victory now is two wins in a row against these two formidable players. We will see what happens. Yes, we go into possibly what could be the decider for the second place. Bren is in the lead. Miquatro pushing a really inside line and unfortunately hitting that inside wall. And it's now going to be all up to Energize to deny Bren that victory. Miquatro is hoping for Energize to get a good inside line here on the dirt turn or on the road turn. And oh. he does get it, overtaking Bren. And it could be a triple finalist situation that we're going to see here virtual. Oh, the nerves must be crazy. Every player is making uncanny mistakes here. Energized is in the lead, but only by a tenth of a second. And you see Bren approaching like he did in one of the first rounds where he was behind and fought his way back. The setups for the ending could be very important. You're going to see Bren go wide here so that he can go early to the left and set up for an inside dirt line. Will this pay off for speed? Will he catch up to Energize? who goes wide or are we gonna have three finalists in the stadium this next yeah. round is gonna decide second place this is such an amazing thing to happen in Trackmania it's happened before as well three finalists on the same time it's gonna be all or nothing now yeah you, you have to win the round and we're skipping back to the first map that we started playing where Carl Jr. was dominant but now in his wake who is going to pick up the 10 pointer and also claim that victory. We will see here just after a short warm up where the players get some time to adjust. Looking back to the last time we played this map, Carl Jr. did win every single round, but going out of this map, I believe that Bren did have the most amount of points uh, other than Carl Jr. So on paper, it did seem like Bren had more pace than the other players, but now it's not only about pace, now it's about keeping it together under very, very intense pressure. Yeah, this is about clutching in the moment of need for these players to really step up and deliver. You know, they're on a stage, they're in another country than where they're at. New PC, new desk setup, lights in your face. A lot of conditions are different, but you just got to play your best track mania when it matters. One win here will give you very important points on the day. Absolutely, and those points, the second you finish, cross that finish line, a huge weight will be lifted off your shoulders. As you know, you performed incredibly well on the first match of the Arctic Gaming Experience. And you got a feel for Ben here. He hit finalists first, he's had many attempts of closing it out, hasn't gotten there, and then for Energize, right? Looking down and out of the match, suddenly, through these conditions, finds a way to go into this last finalist round with a win. He is the one with the momentum right now. Can he convert it into a second place? That momentum, in my opinion, is crucial to have as of right now. Knowing that your opponents also can make mistakes because they're under such severe pressure. Let us jump in here to the one of the final rounds here of match one, deciding the second place winner here. It's going to be Bren Energize McQuattro fighting it out. Here we go, equal starts. We are not seeing big differences here, but great drift from Bran. He goes wide to try to reduce airtime here and gets the landing right. Now they're gonna full speed and jump and land into a drift in the downhill. Exit speed is key once again, and Bran gets that right to hold on to first place. 
You see them snake through the dirt slalom here as Energized is losing a bit of ground to the others up the hill here. The difference has accrued up to 0.2 of a second. And McQuattro and Brandon are looking like the most likely candidates to fight for this one down the plastic turn as we jump up on the road. Great mm -hmm. setup for McQuattro. It's going to get a lot of exit speed. And that gap is shrinking. 700 before the final drift. Will Brandon hold on or is McQuattro going to be able to catch up here? The last downhill. Brandon has the speed. Just needs to land the jump on the platform. And he will secure he second place in the match. He gets it. Brandon secures himself second place. Did take a little bit of time before he could secure that finalist position over with, but he did get it in the end. And now it's down to Miquatra and Energize to see who gets third and fourth, the very final round of the first match here in the Arctic Gaming Experience. And that was a hard fought place. That took everything from him. The time he drove much faster than Carl Jr. drove all first five rounds where he won. So they know the bar is high. Miquatra also delivered an amazing run. And Energize probably feeling like this is going to be very tough with the times on paper, but right now, in the lead early in the round. Yeah, he got a very good start right here. I mean, Quattro needs to be oh. pushing it, and Quattro unfortunately hitting that inside wall, and Energize is gonna have a great lead coming into this checkpoint. One second ahead of Quattro might even extend that a little bit due to the speed that he held in the turn, and now Energize, all he needs to do is keep it together, keep a good pace, and then hit that finish. Yeah, can he get it here? It's not that easy, it's not that trivial. They do make it look effortless, but this takes calculated movements every step of the way. You don't want to push past your boundaries. You need to carry enough speed, then you need to set up for the jump, and now get enough air time to get into the finish. Energize, Energize. secures third place in the match. Incredible performance there from all the players. Can we get a huge round of applause for the first match of the RT Gaming Experience? Very well played by our three player, four players. We will have a winner interview coming up shortly with Carl Jr. now after the hands have been shook. But what an amazing first match that was, Janik. To start off the match, we couldn't really hope for anything better. No, a triple finalist uh, right here in the first match already. I mean, that's kind of maybe feeding us a little bit too good here in the start. I, you cannot ask for more than that. You really cannot, and we are happy to see that, so. Let's get ourselves up to congratulate uh, Carl Jr. If you have a moment for the winner's interview. Carl Jr., you said backstage coming here that your goal for the event was top eight. Here you make it look easy almost with consistent wins. How do you feel now about your overall chance in the tournament? I feel good, but in this match I won a lot of tight rounds. So I got a lot of points because I got pretty lucky in the first round. But uh, I'll try to step it up even uh, further and be in the top eight. And the top eight is the goal. How did you feel about the maps we talked about? Perhaps the fourth map being one of the most difficult in the map pack and driving it consistently. Is that something you think uh, is going to be reliable in rounds to come? I think they are all hard to be consistent on because we all risk. Since we all risk, we have like to crash sometimes because we have really, really, we really need to go close to the wall. Yep. And uh, I mean, you showed it here. You played an amazing match. Oh, it looks like we had the wrong microphone. But to summarize what Carl said, he believes he can get top eight. He says the maps are difficult, but he put on an amazing performance. Do you have anything you want to say to the fans? Yo, thank you so much, guys. And with that, we will now jump to a short break before we continue with match number two. But when we're back, we're going to have more Trek Mania action. Do not go anywhere. We will be back shortly. <laughs> 